health officials in Marin County are issuing a warning as a highly contagious respiratory infection known as whooping cough is on the rise. Since December, the county has seen almost 100 cases, and a lot of them are high school students. So we want to learn a little bit more about what's going on here. So we're joined by a doctor from Kaiser Permanente. This is Dr. Shrey Prasad. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, so what's making people sick? So the infection is caused by a bacteria called Bordetella pertussis. Mm -hmm. And Bordetella pertussis is one of the most contagious of the infections that can afflict uh, children and, and adults. The vaccine is very effective for many years, but then it starts to wane in effectiveness over time. And this was something that was noted by one of uh, by a pair of my Kaiser colleagues a few years ago, Dr. Witt and Dr. Katz. And so every few years we see a, a surge in the cases of Bordetella infection, and then those usually subside as the next cohort of children uh, enter the, the system and they're w with, with still active immunity. So it's, it's very important that if uh, a child or a young adult has severe um, uh, paroxysmal coughing to the point of just violent productive cough, violent dry coughing or coughing to the point of nausea, it's very important that they get uh, Id identified, that they get in touch with their physician, that they get tested, and then that they get treated. The treatment is about five days of antibiotics with an antibiotic called azithromycin. And it's very important that during that five days, they isolate until the uh, until the infection clears, until the bacteria is cleared. So what's the difference here between just a regular cough? There was something mm -hmm. going around our like school community, uh, mostly mm -hmm. in February, just like one after another. People were just coughing. I had it for a while. We kept calling it the black lung because it was like mm -hmm. taking weeks for it to go away. Right. What's the difference between that issue that was going around and the whooping cough? There's how it sounds, like the phlegm that comes out. How can you distinguish between the two? So it's a, that's a very tough question. Ultimately, the gold standard of distinguishing is to get a sample uh, from the nose and from the mouth, and that's a nasopharyngeal sample, and to send it in for testing. The turnaround time on testing is about one day or maybe two days, uh, and that's really the gold standard for making the diagnosis. And now with the evolving uh, uh, cluster that we're seeing, I think it is very important that if you have those symptoms that we get tested, because I think you make a very good point. Sometimes uh, the differences between uh, the standard viral infections and Bordetella infection can be subtle. Uh, in general, viral infections should start getting better pretty quickly uh, within a few days, and the cough should shouldn't last for much more than a week or maybe two mm. weeks. So when you're having these prolonged coughing, that raises the suspicion. And then now that we're seeing confirmed cases of Bordetella infection and we know how contagious it is, it's going to be really important to have a fairly high degree of suspicion and to get uh, help from a physician and, and then potentially get tested and treated fairly early. And you said it's super contagious. And in Marin County, yeah. they're dealing with it in high school students right now. Is this is that an age group that you would see with this type of infection? So what, what my colleagues, Dr. Katz and Dr. Witt, and then subsequently many other investigators have identified is that the latest generation of vaccine tends to wane mm -hmm. after several years. And so we see it as a cohort effect every few years. The last time we would have expected to see this was about four years ago. But around that time was when schools were closed, that learning went virtual, and that when people did congregate, they did so with masks. So we didn't see that, which is which is terrific. But I think we were due for it and we're sort of seeing it now. This seems to be something that happens every few years. The hope is that the next generation of vaccines will have a much more durable and sustained uh, response. I think a longer time. We're about to hit like That's spring right. break time. People are going to be doing a lot of traveling. Any mm -hmm. advice on how not to get this? Right. Really uh, great question. Um, so I think probably the single most important thing is if you are um, vaccination helps a great deal, both in terms of reducing the vulnerability and reducing the severity, even even if it's not uh, perfect. So certainly if you haven't had the vaccine, then you should get vaccinated. Um, and then uh, the, really it's incumbent on people who are sick to get help and identify whether they have this infection or not so it doesn't spread. Um, masking does help. 
uh, but that's not always super practical as we in, in, in today. I mean, it's not as common. Yeah. So I think the priority is to vaccinate yourself and then to, to be responsible for yourself if you are uh, sick to get the help you need because it is a five day isolation period uh, for the duration of antibiotic therapy. Yeah, no one's got time for that. Real quick, yeah. with the last uh, few seconds that we have here, you mentioned you should see your doctor, possibly get some sort of antibiotic, but is there anything over the counter that you recommend when people are just like hacking up a lung <clears throat> like this? Unfortunately, what's been tried over many different strategies have been tried to mitigate the symptoms of this really terrible coughing, these parasitismal coughing, nothing really works that well. Hmm. Um, cough medicines, over-the-counters, uh, even uh, some prescription medications doesn't seem to be super helpful with controlling the cough. So uh, antibiotics help. Uh, we've taken early on. It reduces the duration. And again, the vaccination really makes a difference. Vaccinated people, uh, their symptoms last for potentially 20, 25 days, and the unvaccinated, 60 to 100 days. So the vaccine really does make a difference. All right, Dr. Prashad, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. I've had a lot of questions about this cough for a while. So thanks for making right. some time for us. Happy to help. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Take care.